Second Chronicles 27, a short chapter. Jotham was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Jushiha, the daughter of Zadok. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Uzziah did. How be it? He entered not into the temple of the Lord. Now look at that. Alright, he did what his father did, but he didn't do that one particular sin. And it still charged the other his father. Now when we sin as Christians and we confess our sins and we are truly repentant and sorry, it says if, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from un unrighteousness. Isaiah never repented. He got angry. He got wroth. The leprosy started spreading his face and the priests are booting him out and he's running out and it's never recorded that he got right. So, like Uzziah, if there's no repentance, if there's no being sorry to God and seeking to make things right with God, you're still charged with the sin. And it don't go on to your son. But what Uzzah did right is recorded. But what he did wrong, it's still written down in the book. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. And this is recorded forever. And the people, the people, did yet corruptly. Now this is the first time this word shows up, and it only shows up again in Nehemiah 1.7. Corruptly. So the king is right. The people are wrong. And we've had where some people were right and the king was wrong. We've had where the king and the people were right. And we have where the king up north and the people were wrong. There's those combinations. He built the high gate of the house of the Lord. Right, that's the temple. High gate. Jesus Christ is seated high above all. And on the wall of Ophiel, he built much. Moreover, he built cities in the mountains of Judah. And the Lord's prospering him. He's doing right and he's building and he's magnifying Israel. And I mean Israel, Judah. And in the forest, that's the first time that word shows up, he built castles and towers, strongholds. These are buildings, towers, and castles. You're not going to easy uh, fight and get the victory over. You're not going to just walk up to a to a castle and just you know throw a rock and it's going to fall down. They're mighty fortresses. He fought also with the king of the Ammonites. Is he not right with God? The Bible says he's right with God. He did that which right inside the Lord. Yeah, he still got battles and wars. And when you go through the prosperity of, you know, if you receive Christ, all oh, your, your troubles and problems are going to go away. That's false. We read that he did right in the sight of the Lord. God's happy. He didn't do what his father did as far as it says. He, he's God's building. God's helping him. And he's still got problems and tribulations. And your fellowship may be right with God, but that's not going to start trouble. Matter of fact, you're going to get enemies. As far as the Christian Bible says, all they that live right, all they that do godly shall suffer persecution. And marvel not if the world hates you. And if you're going to live right, and you're going to do right by what the Bible said, you're going to cause enemies. And you're going to find out you're going to have two sets of enemies. You're going to have the world, and you're going to have other Christians. And they'll be battling you. And that battle ain't done until you are dead or the rapture happens. So troubles and tribulations do come to people of God. And he prevailed against them. God gave him the victory. And the children of Amon gave him the same year a hundred talents of silver, ten thousand measures of wheat for bread, and ten thousand of barley, bread, making bakery items. We kicked your butt, now you give us. Because watch what it says. So much did the children of Ammon pay unto him. It wasn't, it said gave, but then when you read the rest of the verse, paid. 
Pay is when, you know, you go to the store, you pick up things, and you pay. It's not given to you. So the Ammonites, one of their losing battles against Judah, Jonathan was, you owe me barley, you owe me wheat, and you owe me silver. Pay up. So not only did he win the battle of the war and the conflict, but after the war, after the conflict, after the battle, he's got more coming back to him in the peace time. And the Ammon paid unto him both the second year and the third year, three years. They gave him silver, they gave him barley, and they gave him wheat. A more sufficient amount for the children of Judah. And what they what they get themselves, here comes more. Here comes surplus. And it's from the enemy. And you can have trouble with your enemies, and yet God can supply a further need from your enemies. But that's not always going to happen. And this is where people look at the prosperity. Well, see, you know, it may not be so. Look at the life of Paul. And Paul reads... Uh, tells us the perils of his life. He went without food. He starved. He went without water. He thirsted. And I'm not talking about a fast for the Lord. He had a point where there was no food to eat. I wonder if they were able to store it up like um, Joseph did. Yeah. For famines. Actually, when, when the tower, I don't know, the tower, when the walls of Jericho came down, the archaeology found rooms where they would keep the stuff. And God says, that's, you know, the whole city, everything go. And they found in those stories from that that wheat and barley was all burnt like God told them. But yeah, there would, there would be, and we've seen it, all these buildings, supplies, and storehouses. The rich man that Jesus spoke about, he said, look, look, look how great I'm, I'm going to tear everything down, I'm going to build barns. I'm so they're, wondering how long it would last. Like, uh, I don't know how long. With Joseph, it was like seven years. Seven year famine. And he just stockpiled, stockpiled for seven years. Yeah, so he could have stockpiled for Three years, because that's abundance. And more. And, and like and what you mentioned with, with Joseph was seven years. And don't forget, Judah produces wheat. Yeah. Judah produces barley. So it was above and beyond what they needed. And thing is, oh, you know, am I supposed to get a job out in the world or not? Well, here comes the pay. Here comes pay from the enemies for your well-being. And Jonathan became mighty. But unlike his father, he didn't get high, he didn't get, I don't mean high, drug, I mean he didn't get prideful, he didn't get lofty, he didn't, look how great I am. I think I'll just go in the temple and do my own service. So you can get mighty and you can do it without pride. Uzzah got prideful, Jotham did not. Yeah, uh, Uzziah got prideful and Jotham didn't. You can be a mighty Christian and still be humble. Man, God may be giving you victories in your life and you're like, you know, God, it's just... Because he prepared his ways, plural, before the Lord is God. He walked before God and did right. And walking in the ways of God prevents you from pride. Now, I guarantee, Jonathan, here he is king. I would guarantee, and I'm only assuming, and I can't be wrong, but I guarantee those prideful moments would have came up in his life that, you know, I'm the king. I'm the head honcho. You know, I've been at this company all these years. I've been a member of this church for this long. And it comes up, and you know what? We got to say, get rid of that. I don't need that. Let's do what the Lord wants me to do. Unlike my father, Uzzah. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all his wars, plural, he's right with God, he's got wars. And Christians are right with God and they got, oh, I ain't got enough money for the bills. I got emergency room. I got a surgery. I got my family bickering. I've got this, I've got that. I got problems with these Christians. I got problems with these world. I got a problem with my job. I got a problem with that. There's wars. And that's the world. There are no wars in New Jerusalem. There is no conflict conflict in New Jerusalem. All pain, sorrow, departing, no more death, no more tears, all that will be gone. Not now, not here. 
and his ways. But what were his ways? Verse 6, the ways of the Lord God. And in his ways, he's still having wars. You would think by the modern prosperity gospel today that Jonathan would be, oh, he's living right, he's great in the Lord. He had no problems at all to sit on his throne all day long. Now, I don't know what kind of uh, septic system, but I would assume that sometimes someone would say, Jonathan, you know, that the, the, the toilet backed up in the castle. They're even repairing the, the Lord's house, the temple, uh, you know, those bricks on the temple there, they need to be fixed. we got to fix that in the temple of God. And we'll see that, and we've seen that. We have to get money to fix the temple. You mean God's house of the Old Testament? It needs to be fixed? Yes. You're not going to have a life on this earth saved, right with God, doing what God wants you to do without conflict, without struggle. Lo, they are written in the books of the kings of Israel and Judah. That would be 1st, 2nd Kings and Chronicles. He was five and twenty years old when he began to reign. And he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And Joshua slept with his fathers. And they buried him in the city of David, Zion. And Ahaz, don't get confused with Ahab. Ahaz, his son, reigned instead. And this is a very short chapter about one man who did right. And there's more to it, but God knows. And we're not going to know everybody, everything about you. We may not know much, if not anything, about you, but God does. So don't go doing things for people to recognize you. Jesus says, go in your prayer closet. And go off to God alone and fast and let God praise you. 